What is up, my fellow sinners? Welcome back to yet another episode of Creature of the Night. I am your host, Toxin, of course, your friendly neighborhood sinner. Today, I thought we would dive into the mind of Clive Barker. And I'm talking, of course, of Hulu's original, Books of Blood. Collective memory. All stories end here. Uh, Bit Britt Robertson, uh, Frida Fo Shin, Nicholas Campbell, Anna Friel, uh, Rafi uh, Gavron, uh, Yul v uh, Vasquez, and Andy uh, McQueen. Director Brandon Barga, and he also wrote it, and along with uh, Adam Simon. Uh, Books of Blood. I'm gonna make this one pretty short, guys. Uh, I couldn't really find any images like how I usually have flashing off. For some reason, I, I don't know why, it's just there really wasn't too much of the, from the show, it was mainly like the books that Clive Barker wrote and stuff like that. I mean, I could throw those in there as well, but, you know, I usually throw in the, the stuff from the film. Books of Blood. Wow. Okay, emotional roller coaster for one. It was three stories all put together in one film and then, you know, they all intertwined with each other. And then, they, you know, they kind of got wrapped up at the end. I'm just going to do each individual story, so bear with me. The first one, we kind of see a, a female running, like she's, you can tell she's had like some mental issues. She's a lot of pills and she, her home life really sucks. She, you could tell she does not get along with her, it looks like her stepdad and her mom. And her mom's always saying shit under her breath or talking about her behind her back. Uh, and it had to do with some incident that happened while she was away in college. She dropped out, now she's back. She hears that they're going to send her back to the farm, so the psychiatric ward, and she ends up stealing money, goes away, uh, runs away to some town, but she notices somebody's following her, maybe somebody that the parents had hired or whatever. And she goes to this house with these weird old couple, and she finds out that not necessarily murderers, but they don't like to let shit go. Quite literally, actually. People who stay there, because it is a B&B, &B, uh, they end up like em embalming them with some kind of stuff that she makes like out of nature to where they can't move, they cut out their eyes, they sew up their ears, they cut out their tongue, and they call it peace. Like, oh, you don't have to worry about nothing. You know, you just live in, literally in the house, in the walls and all that. And, you know, it's at, you're at peace and you don't have to worry about, like, anything that you've done in the past or anything. This is it. You just, you don't have to eat or nothing. You just live in our house. Doesn't sound fucking peaceful to me. Long we saw, we follow these two, uh, they look like hitmen who got word of a valuable book from somebody they were sent to murder at a bookstore, something called the Books of Blood, or the Book of Blood, and they go on a hunt to go find it, and they go to a remote, remote part of the town that so, apparently something crazy had happened, and it's all haunted, and one of the hitmen ends up taking his own life because the ghost gets in his head. The other one comes to find that it's not really a book. That he's looking for it's 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 in the one of the houses that's not destroyed it actually looks brand new and it's actually a person and the dead have stories and literally he he uh, conjured up uh like he was a highway or he was a beacon for people for dead people to come and write their stories so literally it's written in his skin names how they died m last minute messages whatever and uh, they they even show him that his name is on there and he's always talking about you know we're gonna be out of the sewer with, with we're gonna leave the rats behind you know leaving all the his past sins all the dirtbag people he works with so they have rats come and kill him uh, and he actually stumbles upon he's like he makes it out and he actually stumbles upon that house with the old people and they kill him they knock him out with the hammer and then that's it they bury him and start chopping his body they chop up his body and bury him one we see a woman who kind of like this proves uh, mediums and stuff like that, people who can communicate with the dead. She had just lost her son to leukemia. A psychic or whatever comes and he's like, I can speak to the dead and your son actually told me to come here and talk to you. Uh, she, she tries everything in the book to disprove him, but she cannot. There's no possible way. She ends up falling in love with him and she finds out he was actually a drunk and he falls off the wagon, gets drunk one night, tells her it's all a lie. He tells her how she f he fucking faked all the bloody messages on the wall that day when they tested him. And he got she he got all this information from her ex-husband who was there in the the room uh, when the son died, so he had all this information. So 
And then it actually turns out that the son is coming back and communicating with the mother. And she tell he tells her, bring him to us. And so this is where two stories intertwine. She sets it up to where he goes into his room. And the dead come and tell their story and write it into his skin. From the Hitman story, he is he becomes the Book of Blood. That's how they're tied in. And that's pretty much it. Like, okay, you know, they convince the investors. They go on about their business. He stays there. She gets her son's soul back. And she just stays in the house. And that's what actually triggered the main event and shut down half of that town. And it became cursed because of that incident. Well, you know, and then the hitman go and uh, whatever happens to them happens to them. Uh, back to the, the the female who uh, who was in psychiatric ward. Turns out the person who was following her was the dad of her ex boyfriend, and the ex boyfriend had killed himself. Now, you know, throughout the thing, I uh, she was very likable. You know, we felt sorry for her, but after we find out that she was the reason he killed himself. Now, hold up, let me finish. Don't jump to conclusions on what. Oh. Like, you know, he did it on his own. No, he was a fucking simp. It was another Adam and Eve fucking moment. They were actually planning on killing themselves. Like, actually just killing themselves. I can't even say together. Because she convinced him to go do it first. And then after it happened, she chickened out and didn't want to fucking do it. Can we Can we stop? Can we stop following for that guy? Can we stop being simps for that moment? Can we not eat the forbidden fruit, guys? Did we not learn the first time? After you know escaping from those old people, uh, old people's houses, she makes she goes back to the, she goes back to her parents' house, and we know this is after we find out that she was responsible. This is what happened. She ends up going back to those old people's houses, and she lets them embalm them, and she lives out her days in the floor, and that's where it kind of ends. Nice little wrap up, yeah. You know, like there's not really people. You connect with certain characters throughout. Uh, the film, Toxin's Opinion, by the way, you connect with um, multiple, you know, a few of the characters, but then at the end of it, you really don't care. Like, the people who died, some of them needed to die. Uh, the ones we felt sorry for, okay, you know, whatever. You want to live out your life that way, or the mother who lost her son still kind of fucked up what you did. I get that he fucked up and, like, told lies and all that shit, but still fucked up what you did, and now you're going to live out your whole, the rest of your life as a witch with just your ghost son and this weird-ass dude who's bald, naked, sitting in a rocking chair with a bunch of writing on him. Guys, it was very entertaining. Uh, there was really never a dull moment, and, and this is one of those films you do have to pay attention because, like I said, everything intertwines with each other. Everything is you see on that screen, like most films, is for a purpose. It's not just put there at random. But definitely movies like this where it's multiple stories into one and then they wrap it up at the end for you to understand. Pay attention to it, guys. It's a high, I highly recommend it. Two thumbs up for me. I love Clyde Barker. Again, I I try to keep it short. I don't think I like, succeeded. So I apologize if it's just me here talking. Um, but let me know if you check out the film, what you thought about it. Let me know what you thought about this film, guys. Uh, the Hernandez Bros is coming and they're actually Triple H, heavy hitter Hernandez Bros. That's coming soon. Uh, another board, we're trying to get everything together. I'm trying to get the We Them Dudes another episode because y'all kind of blew that one up for me. So I hope y'all like my shit talking. And like I, uh, like I always say, guys, remember, if you're not sinning, you're not having fun. Rock on, guys.